Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm gonna talk all about my experience with my semi truck. Two weeks ago I made a video about purchasing the truck. Now I'm gonna talk about running the truck. I've been running it for two weeks. As you know, I've been running a box truck for almost a year now. I've had some ups and downs, some serious downs, some okay ups. I've heard really great things about CDL tractors and semi trucks. I was too afraid to do it in the beginning, if I'm being honest with you but we're gonna talk about the numbers. We're gonna see how much money I spent. I'll tell you everything that I did in the beginning to get ready, to get prepared to buy the, the semi truck, and I'll show you how much money I've made, how much I pay my driver. It's only been two weeks. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm excited. If you are an owner operator with a box truck, you don't have your CDL, this is something to consider. It's the next step, it's a natural progression. We've been running box trucks for a while now. The next step up is to get a semi truck. Let's look at the numbers. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do Let me start off by saying, if any of you have questions or need help or just wanna to talk to me, I have a link in the description below. You can schedule a consultation with me, 30 minutes, one hour, mentorship, consultations, if you need help. I'm here to give you some answers. Let's look at the numbers, but first, let's give you a background as to the miles I drove and how I paid my driver. Let's show the information on the screen. 16 days. I did my very first run February 16th, and my information here is through March 3rd. 16 days, four of those days being the weekend, so actually only 12 days of operating the truck. I grossed almost $22,000 revenue, which is $1,800 per day, 585 miles per day over 12 days. Total ELD miles, 7,028. Loaded miles, 5,775, with an additional deadhead miles of 678. So I've got three different rates per mile here on the screen. $3.81 was my loaded rate per mile. I'm running a 53 foot dry van. $3.41 per mile was my loaded miles plus my deadhead miles. And then finally, $3.13 was my ELD miles. You can see here that ELD miles is about 400 more than loaded miles plus deadhead miles. No driver is perfect. Sometimes drivers make mistakes, you know, 30 miles out of the way here and there. That's one big challenge that I'm working on right now is making sure my driver is absolutely as efficient as possible. With the box truck, I was not paying ELD miles, but with this driver, I am literally paying for every single mile he drives that's logged on the ELD. So my next challenge, my next goal is to optimize my driver's route. I'm working closely with my dispatcher. I'm trying to figure out exactly how to do it. I'm not sure how to do it yet. If you have any tips or tricks, please drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your advice, but that's what I'm working on next. All right, now, after I gave you some background information, I'm going to run you through every single expense, startup cost, operating cost, every expense that I've had in the past two weeks of operating and a couple weeks before while I was setting up the truck. Everyone knows I'm running with a dispatcher and I use a dispatcher because I wanna be hands off with the operations. I get a lot of feedback saying I'm paying my dispatcher way too much, I should dispatch my own truck. I don't want to dispatch my own truck. I'm okay with paying my dispatcher to find loads. We have an agreement. So I was originally paying 10% for my box truck. Now we're doing 8% for the box truck and 8% for the tractor. Before you freak out, I know 8% is high for a tractor, but it would be 6%, but with the 8% discount on the box truck, it evens out. So my next tractor I get will be 6%. My dispatcher does a lot more than just simply finds me a load. He manages my drivers. He's trying to optimize our route obviously deals with brokers. He does a lot more than just dispatching. I've been with him for a long time. He's almost like a business partner at this point. So do me a favor and please stop telling me I need to fire my dispatcher because I'm not going to. Okay, this is the biggest concern I had in the beginning before I got my tractor. How do I find a driver? Obviously it's easy to find a box truck driver and that's kind of the big appeal for new owners to get a box truck because you can hire anybody, your brother, your son, your dad, your friend, some random dude off the street, he can drive a box truck. But to drive a tractor, obviously you need 
a CDL and those drivers are a lot more difficult to come by because the big companies are offering $5,000 sign on bonus guaranteed $1,500 a week us small owner operators us small trucking companies we obviously cannot compete with that so what I did I found a local staffing agency the staffing agency specializes in CDL drivers and they are local I got super lucky they found me a driver in two weeks if you guys want to know who the, the staffing agency is, please reach out to me. Maybe I'll do a video on them alone in the next couple weeks. They have been amazing. They found me a driver in two weeks. This guy, my driver, has 20 years experience. He actually lowered my insurance premium by $75. He's been driving his entire life. He's a really great employee. The only downside, and this was to be expected, but they upcharge 58%. So I'm paying my driver 58 cents per mile. The staffing agency handles payroll, workers' comp insurance, unemployment insurance, the drug and alcohol consortium, they do all of that for me, but then a little bit extra upcharge markup they charge me because obviously they found me the driver. They're kind of managing all of the expenses of having an employee for me. The good news is after six months, the driver can come be my employee for free. There's no buyout, there's no cost to onboarding the driver after six months. If I wanna take my driver Earlier than six months, I have to pay a buyout fee. I don't plan on doing that yet because I don't want to run payroll. I just don't want the added complexity of actually having employees. So I will continue to use the staffing agency. Paying my driver 58 cents per mile with the 58% markup comes out to be almost exactly $1 per mile. So based on the 7,000 miles I drove in the first 16 days, I'm essentially paying my driver $7,000. All right, so now that we have the dispatcher of the driver expense accounted for, next up we have our fuel expense. As everybody knows, diesel prices are increasing. In order to calculate your fuel expense, it's pretty easy. You can just look at your fuel card report, you can look at your gas receipts, or you can just do a simple calculation. Take the total miles driven and divide that by your miles per gallon. For me, for my tractor, 6.6 .6 miles per gallon over the last 16 days. So 7,000 miles divided by 6.6 .6 miles per gallon. That gives you how many gallons of fuel you've used. And then take that number, multiply it by the cost of fuel, which for me is $4.20 for one gallon of diesel, most likely going up in the next few days. I have a fuel expense of $4,472 over the past 16 days. There's nothing you can do about the fuel. The only thing you can do is try to find a good fuel card. All right, next expense that we have on the screen here is the factoring fee. Everybody knows you probably need a factoring company, maybe not, maybe you have 10 or $20,000 cash saved up or you have a line of credit that you're leveraging. If you do, great, that's awesome. Continue leveraging the line of credit, but if you don't have cash, if you don't have enough money to sustain operations short term, you need to have a factoring company. RTS is a great factoring company. I've heard good things about OTR. I've heard some things about Bobtail, I'm not too sure about them. The factoring company I use, I would not recommend. It is not any of those three. I pay 3.5% plus additional fees typically brings me to about 4%. So factoring total expense, $880. But if you're doing your calculations on your own, you can account for about three to 4% of your total revenue as a factoring expense. Next up, insurance. I was absolutely amazed. Insurance wasn't really too much more expensive for my tractor than it was for my box truck. I don't really understand why. My tractor is valued at $60,000 and my box truck is valued at $21,000. I think I'm spending like $1,100 a month for my box truck insurance. My tractor insurance was only $1,500 a month, which is awesome. I use Red Rose Insurance. They're a local insurance agency. They specialize in trucking. They're great. If you need insurance, I highly recommend you reach out to them. So I took $1,500 and just divided it by two because I'm really only showing the numbers for two weeks or half of a month. So for these calculations, I'll use $750 as my insurance expense. All right, the next expense we have to account for is interest. If you got a loan to buy your truck, more than likely you're paying interest on that loan. And it's important that you separate interest from your principal every single month on your payment. You wanna capture your interest expense and you wanna capture, for me, I got kind of a unique loan. I leveraged some personal assets and I got a $45,000 line of credit and so I'm only paying $178 a month on interest on that line of credit. I'm in a unique situation. More than likely other people will probably be paying a lot more than that per month. 
on interest. And then these supplies I have on the screen here, these are pretty much all startup costs associated with this tractor. So I don't plan on spending $600 every single month or every two weeks on supplies, but let me tell you real quick what I bought. And if you have more questions about the supplies that I bought, two weeks ago I made a video talking all about the individual supplies and I was kind of showing off everything that I got from my tractor. But we'll do a real quick rundown of everything that I got. Keep truck and ELD, a mount for my iPad, the iPad itself, a cover for the iPad, a toolkit. I got like a diesel mechanic, very standard set of tools for my driver just in case he breaks down in the event he needs a wrench or a screwdriver or some pliers, a hammer, a rubber mallet. I was told a rubber mallet is best for checking the tire pressure, bolt cutters just in case the seal on the trailer door is a little tough to get off. And then I pay every single month for data for my iPad. And then finally I got him a, ca a car charger for the iPad. So just miscellaneous supplies, 600 bucks. It's not gonna be that expensive, hopefully not every single month, but I would account for, if you are doing your budget, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month just for miscellaneous supplies. Next up we have my GPS. So I have mixed feelings about my GPS setup I'm currently using. I got an iPad which cost me $50 a month for the iPad itself and the data plan. And then I'm using the Trucker Path GPS. I don't know how I feel about it. I've heard really good things about the Rand McNally GPS. It's only like $300 on Amazon and that's a one-time fee. I don't think there are any monthly recurring expenses. So I've heard good things about the Rand McNally GPS. Also the Garmin GPS I think is pretty good. I don't know, I went with the iPad because my driver can use the iPad for his keep truck and ELD login. He can use it to take pictures of the BOL and email them to myself and my dispatcher. So the iPad is multifunctional. The iPad screen is, is pretty big, it's user friendly. I haven't decided which GPS I wanna continue using, but for now I'm spending $11 a month on the Trucker Path app for my iPad for GPS. Next I have registration fees, and these registration fees are unique to CDL trucks. So if you're running a box truck, you probably don't have to worry about these, but, and these are, once again, these are startup costs, so these will not happen every single month, but I think I spent like, I spent $12 on my IFTA stickers, just, Two st one sticker that goes on each side of the truck. It's like a little blue square. It changes color every single year. It just shows that the truck is registered for IFTA. I'm probably gonna make a new video in April talking all about IFTA filing. I've never done it before. I'm gonna learn how to do it and I'll show you guys how I do it. And then after IFTA, we have the heavy vehicle use tax, which does not apply to non-CDL box trucks, but if you're running a CDL tractor, you need to file your heavy vehicle use tax. I used some online software company. I don't know, they, they charged me like $60 to file it and then I think the heavy vehicle use tax because I only filed it for like the remainder of the year. It was like two or $250, I don't know, but I think all in total for registration fees, I spent a little over $300 and those are just startup costs. So those will not happen every single month. Okay, this is a big one. I talk about repairs a lot and I typically account for 15% of total miles driven per week for repairs and maintenance. So if I'm driving 3000 miles, that means I'm saving $450 every single week for repairs and maintenance. If you have a newer truck, maybe 10% of miles driven. If you have an older truck, maybe 20% of miles driven, but somewhere between 10 and 20% is probably a good safe estimate for how much money you should be saving for repairs. I had quite the incident last Friday. My truck actually broke down. There was a leak in the oil pan, so all the oil leaked out. The truck shut down and I needed to install a new oil pan. My truck was in Illinois. I, I, the truck wasn't home, so I couldn't send it to my usual mechanic. So of course, I'm gonna spend a premium at the truck stop to get this fixed. And all in all, I ended up spending close to $2,000 on the repair, it was just the oil pan needed to be replaced, but that was like $600, then the labor was like $1,000. I spent like $120 on a stupid taxi to take my driver 14 miles, that's it, 14 miles, $162 for the taxi. I couldn't believe it, I got ripped off, but I was desperate, I had no other option, he was in the middle of nowhere, literally not an Uber around to come pick him up, so I had to call some local taxi company. Anyway, all in all, the breakdown cost me like $150 layover fee that I paid to my driver and about $2,000 in maintenance. The only good thing I will say, Five Star International, huge shout out to them and their customer service. They are reimbursing me for 50% of the cost for the breakdown because I bought the truck two weeks ago. So I called them up and I showed them the receipts and they agreed to pay, I think $900 to reimburse me for the breakdown. So thank you, Five Star International. I appreciate 
your cooperation with the reimbursement. Okay, last two things I wanna talk about, tolls and appreciation. Tolls, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. If you're driving in New Jersey, New York, you're gonna spend a lot on tolls. I got pretty lucky. I've only spent $80 in the first 12 days of operations on tolls, just the luck of the draw, I guess. I was mostly in like the South and the Midwest, so I guess I just avoided the toll roads, the toll roads, but I always account for like 5% of total miles driven. So if you're driving 3,000 miles a week, just assume you're gonna spend 100 to $200, maybe $150 a week on tolls. It's not an exact science, it's not perfect, it really depends on your geographical location, but it's good to at least guess and estimate how much you're gonna spend, and then you can always adjust your numbers once you get your depreciation. So my truck was $60,000. I, I talk about depreciation all the time. Five years, 12 months, 60, months of depreciation. $60,000 divided by 60 months of depreciation every single month. I'm going to capture $1,000 of depreciation expense on my profit and loss statement. Right now I'm showing the numbers for half of a month, so $500 of depreciation. All right, so I know I went through all of that pretty quickly, but I just wanted to show you how much money I've spent in the first two weeks, startup cost and operating cost. And now, drum roll please, I'm so excited. As you guys know, if you've been following my channel, I've had a rough time with the trucking business because I don't participate in the trucking operations on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm spending a lot of money, but the intent is to grow a company that I don't have to work in. So I'm hiring drivers, I'm hiring a dispatcher, I'm trying to just buy assets and hire quote unquote um, employees to manage the business for me. That way I can just run the business from the top. So with all that being said, I'm very pleased to finally announce that I am profitable. My, my semi truck is profitable. And I'd known this for a long time. I've, I was honestly scared to get into the semi truck game because I was worried about getting a driver. IFTA and apportioned plates just scared me, but looking back on it, that's silly. The one thing I want you to take away from this is if you have a box truck, if you're thinking about getting into the trucking business, look into a semi truck. Even if you don't have your CDL, you can buy one, you can hire a driver, and you can make a lot of money with a semi truck. I'm gonna throw the numbers up on the screen here. My total income, my total expenses. After I take out all those expenses, my net income is just a little over $3,000 in only 16 days of operations. I cannot believe it. I'm still shocked. I'm really excited for what the future holds. My plan is to get another semi truck in like two to three months, as long as I can sustain these numbers. But even with paying my driver a dollar a mile through the staffing agency, even with the elevated diesel prices, even with the breakdown of $2,000, even with paying my dispatcher 8%, the company is still highly profitable and I'm honestly not doing anything other than managing my dispatcher. Obviously I bought the truck and then I submit the invoices for factoring. That's all I do. I've set up this company so that I don't have to participate in the day-to-day -day operations. I just manage it from the top. Do what you think is